who has too much free time. So you work for a commissioner, and all of a sudden, he gets his own ideas, he wants to do something. This is, this is a wrong signal. It means he has too much time, too much free time. And in that case, that case, there is a big danger that he wants to agree to media interviews. So he wants to go to the hostile outside world. Or he wants to meet people who merely want to get something out of him. It's better to keep the commissioner indoors, in his own office. He shouldn't go out and meet strange people. So we uh, had cabinet meetings every Tuesday in order to uh, police the agenda of the commissioner, Mr. Bolkenstein, who tended to go his own way. Now, when a commissioner, particularly when he has the good holidays, it's very important because commissioners like to have holidays, they travel to a nice place in the world, they come back in a good mood, and there are requests on his, on his desk, and he will say yes to the secretary. Now, I've been working close to the secretary all the time, because I had to inform the head of cabinet of all these requests, and I had to rein in as well the secretary. And therefore, the agenda of the commissioner, commissioner should be meticulously policed. What does it mean? It means no empty places. Fill it up. Pencil in technical meetings, and increase the number of briefings. In particular, special defensive or naughty issues. Just keep the man busy. That's what you have to do. Now, if a commissioner, like Commissioner Bolkenstein, uh, wants to see the media, make sure that he is never alone, because he will be seduced to juicy statements. I remember that one time he agreed to an interview in Vrij Nederland, and the interview was taken at his home in Amsterdam. The cabinet did not know about it. It was a disaster because he accused somebody of a criminal fact. And the cabinet was in disarray, and we didn't know what to do. Or we had to use all sorts of manipulations to get it off the shelf. Now, if he gets an interview, the interviewer should come to the office of the commissioner. The commissioner should not go out of his office, because he'll meet too many people. Now, the spokesman is a very important person, because he has to manipulate the media. And the spokesman has to find out, he was a Brit at the time, Jonathan Todd, uh, the, the spokesman has to find out what the journalist is going to ask. And he has to prepare a line to take, an LTT. Now, an LTT is very important, because it guides the commissioner. If he goes outside of his LTT, he will be in trouble. And once I experienced, how dangerous a seemingly innocent interview can be when a journalist of the Daily Telegraph called Mr. Ambrose Evans Pritchett, a beautiful name, came to see the commissioner who appeared to be utterly unprepared. It was seven o'clock in the evening and he wanted to go home. But there was the journalist who came for the interview and the commissioner had said, said yes to the request. Now, the commissioner expected to go home and he had not read his LTT. And then Evans Pritchard asked the question, why Britain has a special position within the European Union? And then the commissioner replied, and I start quoting, it was one of the most horrible uh, moments I experienced in the European Commission. He said, and I quote, Great Britain is the only EU member which came out of, the world, of world War II as a winner. One way or another, all other countries were losers. The spokesman started already sighing, and I thought, oh my God, here we go. But Bolkenstein looked into the microphone of Mr. Evans Pritchard, and he simply continued. And he said, Britain never heard the thump of German jackboots down Whitehall. All other countries lived in a fantasy land. The French think the Gaul liberated the country single-handedly. 
The Dutch think that resistance fighters riding around on bicycles were a major factor in the defeat of the German army. In Belgium, the whole political elite collaborated until five minutes before the Allied tanks arrived in Brussels. And the Austrians cherished the myth that Hitler was a German and Beethoven an Austrian. <laughs> Whereas in reality, it was just the other way around. And then he said, strangely enough, the only country to tell the truth about the war is Germany. End of the quote. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine the grim faces of the Mandarins when they read this in the Daily Telegraph, a paper they sincerely despise as, as a product of anti-European populism. And I remember that just after Mr. Evans Pritchard had left, the commissioner looked at me and asked me, did I say anything wrong? <laughs> and I said, sorry to say, Commissioner, every word was wrong. Because in the European Commission, we do not invoke the Second World War. It only leads to a lot of trouble. We have to forget about it, at least here. We have to produce legislation. We have to liberalize markets. We have to help the consumers but we should, we should not redo the Second World War. And of course, as a Mandarin, because I was there, I was blamed because I didn't prevent it. Now, what did the commissioner do wrong? He said what he thought. He should not do that. He is supposed to repeat the wording of the LTT, which protects him against himself. But the commissioner, Bolkenstein, went out of the LTT quite often and therefore was regarded as out of control. So we were really sweating in this cabinet and I was the only member of cabinet who worked for him for the whole period of five years. All the others looked for a better job <laughs> as head of unit or a director, which is much safer than working and being a speechwriter for the man who likes uh, history a bit too much. Now, for 50 years this system of the European integration worked well because the EU used a method of gradual integration based on technical files, as I've shown, produced by European Mandarins and propelled forward by the political elites of the member states. It was a government for the people but without the people. And this so-called method Monet expanded European decision-making into policy-making areas affecting daily life of citizens. Europe issued legislation, but hardly any citizen noticed. And this is a dream come true for every single Mandarin. The volatile, tricky and stormy outside world is neutralized. Brussels works and nobody knows. It's great. But then, what went wrong? I will try it again, or is it? What went wrong? In 2001, the Belgian presidency of the European Union, I do not know whether there are Belgians here in the audience, proposed to put, but that will be a bit tough here, uh, proposed to put the European Union legally on a federal footing. Belgians are dedicated European federalists because federalism in Belgium doesn't work. For Belgians, a federal Europe is a safe haven to escape to after their own federal state evaporated, which is happening as we speak. So the declaration of Laken was destined to push the EU on a federal course through a convention which was supposed to produce a constitution. Now many people in Brussels, the Mandarins, were enthusiastic about the constitution because finally it was there, the big leap forward. The then president of the commission, Mr. Prodi, immediately produced his own draft of a constitution, which was, of course, secretly prepared by his personal staff. Mr. Prodi had three cabinets, one real cabinet, one secret cabinet, and one a cabinet for Italian affairs to fight Mr. Berlusconi, which he did on a daily basis. And with some success, because Mr. Prodi is the prime minister of Italy. 